when people keep repeating that you'll never fall in love and everybody keeps retreating and you can't seem to get enough let my love open the door let my love open the door let my love open the door to your heart Yeah, when everything feels all over And everybody seems unkind Let my love hold you closer Take all the worry out of your mind Let my love open the door Let my love open the door Let my love open the door To your heart, yeah To your heart The only key to your heart in I can stop you from falling apart Release yourself from misery There's only one thing's gonna set you free And that's my love That's my love da 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 Tragedy befalls you, don't let it drag you down. Oh, cause love can cure your problems. Eyes up, your feet on the ground. Yeah, let my love open the door. Let my love open the door. Let my love open the door to your heart. To your heart. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to this wonderful celebration. Before I forget, let's make sure that we welcome everybody online to this wonderful celebration this morning. Yeah, so my name is Reverend Eileen, and I am the senior minister and the spiritual leader at this church, and it is such a thrill and a privilege for me to be a part of all of you. And I'm going to just open with a little prayer right now. So in this present moment, I remember that we are brought together in love. We are brought together in peace. We are brought together in joy. And in that celebration of love, peace, and joy that we are, we share that with one another this morning in this moment knowing that we are one, one with the only one God. And so it is. Amen. Now, rise up and let's do our song and let's get this party started. All right. In the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, 
in the light and the love and the glory I am. You know what to do. I am is God created me. In the light and the love and the, love in the glory. I am is God created me. glory I am is God created me in the light and the love in the glory two more times now I am is God created me in the light and the love in the glory all together I am I am is God created me in the light and the love Thank you, thank you. Doesn't have as much uh, when, when Brian's not here. We love you, Brian. We hope you're having a great time on your trip. Thank you so much for helping with percussion. I am alone on my tambourine, so I appreciate the clapping. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy. This is Jesse. We are the dynamic duo this morning, so we welcome you. Thank you. And now I get the honor of introducing our platform host, Kathleen Hassan. Good morning, Unity. As, just, as Amy said, I'm Kathleen Hassan. It's my joy to be your host today. And I've been asked to share just a few words about my experience at Unity. Before I came here, I felt like I was constantly holding my breath. I was filled with fear and trying to be good enough to please a God outside of myself. And when I came here to Unity, uh, it felt like a giant exhale. And it reminds me of the, the movie, Waiting to Exhale, because it ex describes exactly how I felt. But when I came here, I discovered the God within me. And I learned that I could breathe into this love and tap into this power, and it's absolutely transformed my life. So let's all take a nice deep breath together here. And exhale fully and deeply with a sigh, uh, a sigh of relief because we're home. And now I'd like to extend that welcome and invite any newcomers or first time visitors to stand if you're comfortable. We just want to recognize you and welcome you. Anybody new here for the first time? Yay! And as always, I invite the community to say this with me to our guests. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All newcomers are invited to the Welcome Center in the Breezeway outside after service for a special gift from all of us at Unity of Naples. We're so glad you guys are here. A couple of announcements for you this morning. Starting Friday, October 11th, switch off the outside world and snuggle up with your loved one for a two-hour date night with Unity of Naples community members, Atika and Barry Conti. Ooh, ooh, it's, uh, <laughs> you're gonna bring a blanket, <laughs> we can curl up. Put the spark back into your relationship through meaningful, engaging, and enjoyable activities. I can't wait. I'll try to get my happy to come. <laughs> then, from October 25th through the 27th, join Grace Barr and Mary Ann Battaglia in the Hero's Journey, a three-day, multifaceted workshop where you'll return to your soul's purpose via the path of the luminous warrior. Through direct experience, you will learn how to create your own sacred space and how to use the ancient tools of, shaman, of the shaman to become better stewards of the earth and one another. 
Registration is now open for both of these events at unitynaples.org. Our theme for 2024 is Practical Tools for Spiritual Living. Our July theme is The Power of Understanding. And today's message is entitled Seek and You Will Find by Rev. Eileen Biago. I now invite you all to stand up and join with me as we recite our community purpose statement. Please say this with me. We are a spiritual community that inspires profound personal and global transformation by empowering one another to awaken to the truth of who we are. Please stay standing and take a moment to greet your neighbors with love this morning. you to come into this time of meditation 
to sit up straight in your chair with your spines erect so that that energy can flow. And I ask you to take a nice, slow, deep breath all the way up to the top of your head. Just picture that breath coming all the way up and down very slowly, putting you in this present moment. And I ask you to do that again coming into the present moment and just appreciating that breath of yours coming all the way up and all the way down as you clear your minds to be in this moment. Allow your shoulders to relax and your eyes to close or your gaze to soften. How would it feel to have an amazing day today? A simply amazing day that you master through your loving communication with yourself and others. What would it feel like for you to be able to embrace self-love, to embrace the power of understanding who you really are? I ask you to become aware in this moment and allow yourself to feel amazing, to feel your kindness, to be aware of the love that you have within you, God. It's an amazing day. What does this amazing day look like for you? It's time to free yourself from the chains that hold you back, that hold you back for the fear of maybe being unsuccessful, holding you back from allowing the freedom of God's unconditional love to penetrate even deeper in your mind's eye. that love that makes us one with the one. Allow yourself to feel the peace that that brings and how it opens a pathway to your birthright of peace. place within my mind and I will wait upon the Lord wait upon the Lord be still my soul be still be still
Mm. We close this meditation knowing that you are an inspiration. You have the vitality of new life. You're in a new moment. You have a new understanding of who you are. As Jesus said, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and this door will always be open to you. I invite you to take your time coming back into the room. Open your eyes when you're ready. Are you running from everything you've done? But it's right behind, tightly hanging on, always chasing you, no matter where you hide. There's a secret truth I wish we all knew. What you're looking for is looking for you. Present resonates with what's inside your mind. You ought to know if you seek it, you will find. Seek it, you will find. Your stars are all aligned. Magnetic mind knows no wrong or right. If you think it's dark, you won't see the light. It's a neutral space that asks what it should see. Time to tap into a different part of you. One that's always known you are what you do. And that search and discovery are one in the same energy. You already know if you see it, you will find. So what you may not know is Jesse made his debut. He wrote that song. (laughs) 
the beginning of the week, he said, I don't know if I'll have it finished. And I went into my, I'm the senior minister role. And I said, you will have that finished, Jesse. And he did it. He did it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we're winding up the month of um, understanding. And seek and you shall find. You shall find understanding. You'll find a lot of things. Last week, Reverend Joe talked about prayer, affirmative prayer that we would have for ourselves. And that affirmative prayer has to have a purpose. Why would we be praying if we didn't have a purpose? But we always have a purpose. The purpose is, either, is going to be whatever the situation is for you. And it could be just a prayer of wonderful gratitude. But we're in a situation where we say, I want to seek and find. So he tied in beautifully what we've been talking about this week. We're called to awaken within, and prayer does that. Unity was founded on prayer. Prayer is all about wanting to create change in your life. How do we create change in our life? Well, I'm going to now tell you that there are two people that I am positive did their homework last week. Two people. That would be Dina and Paula, and I'm going to ask them to come up here with me, and they're going to demonstrate their homework. They're going to do show and tell. Are we ready, girls? All right. We're going to show you what, what Reverend Joe talked about, and he gave bingo a new name and a new feeling. So here we go. Begin with God. God is. Include ourselves. I am. Name your good. I can see, I can feel, I know. Give thanks, appreciate, gratitude and over and out, out into the universe with a great big yes. And thank you. <laughs> and thanks for joining in. That was great. That looked beautiful, beautiful. So once the prayer is released, we don't keep questioning it. Very important. It's like when you're baking a cake. You don't say, I'm going to put this cake in the oven, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to open it and make sure it's baking. No, it's going to flop. So prayer is like that. Once we send it out into the universe, we don't keep checking and questioning and wondering because we believe in our hearts that we deserve what we are seeking. Make sense? Yeah. So I was walking around these beautiful grounds, this campus this week, and some of you may have noticed there's been some new plantings. And, um, and with all of that, I said, you know, I'm going into the gathering room for a few minutes and just not take for granted everything I am so blessed to be with all day long, you know. And I found a poem on one of the shelves in there. And it's a poem, it's beautiful, and a piece of wood and all carved and everything. It's a poem by James Dillett Friedman. James Dillett Friedman was born in 1912, and he was a minister of new thought and a poet. And you know the prayer protection that we say at the end of our service? Many of you know this already, that that was written by James Dillett Friedman, and it was actually carried to the moon in 1969 by the Apollo astronaut. So it sits up there on the moon. So when you say it at the end of today, you think about that. It's amazing. But this poem is called Joyful Recollections by James Dillett Friedman. 100 years of unity, 100 years of prayer, of helping people know that when they need God, God is there. This is our faith. God is at hand. 
We need to seek to find the secret dwelling place of God in our own heart and mind. God's love has answered our heart's prayer, even before we call. God is our help in every need. Christ is in one and all. Unity, O oh unity, come sing with us about the faith that leaves the whole world free and yet leaves no one out. So, I think he does a beautiful job of summing up how important unity is and how important prayer is. I'll put that back in there if you want to see it, okay? So, this past month, change your life happens when you change your thoughts. And we know Gandhi is very well known for saying, be the change that you want to see. We've been talking about, well, we have to have insight into this. What is it that we want to change? Once we get that insight, then we realize that there's something that we need to understand on a different level than we were understanding it before. And then when we do that, we're able to communicate with one another in a way, ourselves first, and one another, and then we get a sense of belonging, that we belong with each other. Right? So that's it. Insight. Realizing. Ah, I need to change something here. Understanding happens because of that realization. And then we're able to communicate well with ourselves and others. Well, I'm going to share with you that when I was in my early 20s, um, <laughs> I, get, I finally had an insight. It took a long time. But I had an insight, and it was like God is finally speaking to me and helping me realize that those feelings that come up for me in situations where I feel not good enough, not worthy, not important, where that's really not the truth of who I am. But yet I have a little ego in there that keeps reminding me of that as a protection. And I got in touch with, you know, what is it? Why is it that this is bothering me so much? That I shrink down and don't be who I am. And then, here's the insight. I remember my dad helping me with my times tables, and I wasn't good at my times tables. And he called me stupid. Now, yeah, so all you need to do is be eight years old and be called stupid and by your parent, and you believe it, right? So that, I got to the crux of it. That's what it is. And when you're able to get to what it is, then you're at choice. Do I want to stay a victim and a martyr of this? Am I going to play small all my life? Am I not going to be who I am meant to be? Or am I going to move on in my life and realize my good? Well, I had to understand myself, which I kind of just did with you right now, right? But I had to understand my father. That's understanding on different levels. That man loved me. And the only way he could show it was to tell me I wasn't getting the times tables that he's trying to teach me. And whatever it is that came out of his mouth and in the way that he did it, what that did was bring me to a place of knowing that's only the way he knew to do it. It was the only way. He wouldn't have done that if it wasn't, if there was a different way, if somebody had taught him differently. So with that, I had to be forgiving of him with no problem and forgiving of myself for not liking him. So a lot went on with that. So you see how understanding something, once you get the insight and you realize the situation, you are able to then understand it on a different level. 
I have no idea what Amy, what Amy and Jesse went through as he was writing this song, but I'm sure Amy went through some things too. And uh, I have no idea of that, but I can understand that the two of them working together, Jesse was able to create something beautiful. But I don't understand what it was like to be them, right? So that's the difference. We have to get to a point in our lives, like I did with my dad, where I'm saying, I don't understand as a little child why I would be called stupid and what it did in my life at that time. But I need to understand where he was coming from and forgive. Part of that means that I have to be able to respectfully communicate with myself, not beat myself up, but understand who I really am. We all struggle with messy stuff, don't we? We all struggle. Every one of us in here have felt this at one time or another that I have. You're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not brave enough, you're not whatever enough, because it's the human condition. We're going to feel it. But where do we go from there with that? What do we do? We look at the situation differently. We seek and we find. We seek what it is that we are looking for, no matter how messy things are, and understanding that things are messy for our growth. I grew tremendously from that. Once I had a handle on that, and that was in my early 20s, I was like, no way. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm going to tell you that, yes, I fall and falter. But I know how to pick myself up immediately. I don't want to stay there. That's no fun. And, you know, I, I'm going to share with you that I had a, a phone call this week that really brought home to me understanding and what it's about. A friend who lives um, in another state but who has been a member of Unity for a long time, called me to update me about her husband's serious prognosis. She seemed so good while she was telling me, and I'm like, this is un insurmountable, as I'm listening to it, trying to understand what it would be like to be in her shoes. And I was just so surprised at how peaceful she was because my conversations with her over the past month have been, she's frantic. And before I could ask her how she's doing, although I wanted to hear her because she looked like she was, or sounded like she was doing great, she said to me, so much good has come from my husband's illness. To be able to say that. We have realized through this illness that we should be taking one little step at a time, not trying to take on the whole problem, not trying to solve the whole problem, not thinking the doctors have the answers to all the problems, but believing in God. And she said an interesting thing happened to both of us. We fell deeper in love, deeper than we have ever been. And we are enjoying each day as we live these days out, not knowing how long we have with each other. But we have found that God loves us in this situation so much. There is no lack of love. And we know that God is everywhere present. And I just thank Unity for what they've done for me in my life to help me understand and realize this. And honestly, to hear her say it, I started to cry a little, you know. I got emotional that she could look at things like that. And um, I'm finding the older I get, <laughs> the more emotional I get about things that I'm holding so deep that there's really no words even for what you're feeling. But those feelings were so real and so beautiful. And they talk about how we have to change our lives. There's nothing stagnant about us, nothing. And so I invite you to quiet your inner critic 
that ego that gets a hold of you sometimes. And to take yourself to a new place of understanding. Take yourself to a place where you're not patient and kind with yourself. And start changing things up for yourself. Or a person that annoys you or bothers you. Take that to a new understanding, to a new place that something's going on for them. And they're in my life for my growth. I invite you to take small steps. It should be written right across our head, our heads. Small steps required. <laughs> Don't try to rush. And small steps will do. Try it and you will be true. Oh, I tried to rhyme that. Okay. <laughs> But here's the thing, small steps. When we try to jump at something and try to handle the whole thing, like Jesse, he told me, I have part of the song written, I don't have the whole thing written. He was taking small steps to get to where he wanted. Is that true, Jesse? Yeah. It's when we do that that we find success in the things that we do, that we don't set ourselves up to lose. And when we do that, we can start looking beyond our personalities to the light within us and understand who we truly are. And when things are messy, and they can be messy, that's my word today, messy, um, that we can straighten that out through prayer, through this understanding that when we get an insight, we can actually do something about it. We can realize that we have the power of understanding, one of the 12 powers of man and woman. We have that within us. And the more we're able to do that, what happens is we can look beyond the personality of all the other people that annoy us. We can say, ah, something's going on for them. It doesn't necessarily have to be about me. But I can understand better whatever their need is, that they get it out, that they do whatever they need to do, and allow that God spark that's within them, and that God spark that's within me to be that communication, that respectful, wonderful communication. I tell you, when you're able to do this, and I know you've all done it, it's liberating. It's what I call emotional freedom. We are free from all the emotions that hold us down, that make us think we aren't good enough, smart enough, brave enough, whatever it is. It's a bunch of junk. It's not the truth. And so the more we're able to do that, the more we're able to be grateful. And interestingly enough, the more that we do that, the ego kind of settles down and it says, oh, I think she can handle that. Hmm. I might take a breath or two. How many times in your life, for example, have things bothered you and they don't bother you anymore? Yeah, that's the ego relaxing and saying, ah, she's got this, he's got this, all is well. It brings us to a place of excitement and understanding and enthusiasm and you never get worn out. You never get worn out coming from that place. So when we master the skill of separating ourselves from negative thinking and allowing self-expression to come forward, that's love. That's God's love. That's us communicating love. That's how it happens. It just happens. We don't have to go into some deep, oh, I think I better start thinking now. I want God to come forth in me, and I think I better... No, it just happens naturally when we're coming from this beautiful place within us and we allow God to really be there. You can never go wrong. You can never go wrong. Because you're finally accepting the divine within you, that inner intuitive knowing that you have, that we don't trust so many times. Well, that can't be. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. That's the power of understanding. You never get tired of it, I promise you. We are meant to experience God more and more within and without. Bringing it without. Not less. Not less. And in spite of the experiences that we have and what's going on in the world all around us and the fear and the anxiety, 
We want that to become a thing of the past. We want to be like the eye of the storm. There's the eye of the storm. You know this with hurricanes. Quiet, peaceful. While everything's going on around, that's what we're called to. We're called to be the eye of the storm. Because if God is for us, who could be against us? Who? I want you to remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse, I mean chapter 7, it was verse 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will always be open. But we have to do the work. We have to do the work. We have to search, we have to look, and we have to find. And when that happens, as Jesse mentioned in his song, beautiful, wonderful things happen for us and happen for the whole world. So I think by now, you have down what we've talked about all month long. And just in case you want to talk about it some more, I'm going to be in there in the gathering room so we can dig a little deeper if you want to into this. But for now, I'm going to say, and so it is, amen. And now before the ushers come forward, I just want to talk about what we, what we did last week. What we did last week was talk to you about um, the fact that we're doing a little makeover here in the church, and we have a lovely, wonderful couple who was generous enough to pay for all of the carpeting that is going to go in. And now we're looking for your generosity in the program that we've started the campaign to um, buy chairs. And again, we said you can't fight over the chairs. The chairs will be in here. The chairs are $95. And what we're asking is that you continue to give your donation weekly and that this is a part of a campaign and we'll keep you informed on how many chairs and everything you'll see it up there. But I have to tell you this. For those of you that know Vera Lindaberry, I called her last night. I said, Vera, are you in bed? It was like 8 o'clock. She said, oh, no, not yet. And I said, I have to ask you, when was the carpeting installed in this church? And she went back and she thought, and she thought, she said, 35 years ago. This carpeting is 35 years old, and the chairs are 35 years old. I think we're due for a makeover, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So thank you to all who do end up giving to this campaign. Your bodies are going to be very thankful when you get to sit in those cozy seats. Like she said, we also ask that you still maintain your weekly donations for the not so pretty things. We need to buy soil for the ground and we need to pay our AC bills and all the fun stuff that comes with running a building and a land. So we thank you, thank you so much and online for all that you do for this community because it serves you. So go ahead and take your offering in your hand. If it's your love today, place it on your heart and say with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you.
so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I invite all the prayer chaplains to come on up here with me. And we're going to form a wall of prayer. There they come. Okay. And Kathleen's going to take over, and I'm going to sit down. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Together. We bless this offering with grateful hearts. Could you all extend your hands to the gifts, please? We bless this offering with grateful hearts for the generosity of our community, that we continue this sacred work, that we are there to uplift others in need. May this multiply and go out into this community to bless us all. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. As we close our service this morning, a quick reminder that there's one-on-one -on -one prayer on either side of the sanctuary. We have Maddie Meehan and Doug Kraft over there. And I also just want to remind you that all of your prayer chaplains are available to you anytime at all that you need to be reminded of the truth of who you are. Um, Rev. Eileen, as she mentioned, will be in the gathering room following service to dig deeper into the message of seeking and you will find for her heart-to-heart -heart gathering. Now would you all please rise for the closing prayer. We are so blessed and so grateful for the wisdom and inspiration we receive today. As we go forth from this sacred space, may we feel the shift within us, transformed by the message and the truth that if we seek, we will find. May we all be blessed and be a blessing to everyone we meet today. And so it is. Amen. And together we say, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.